Hi, this is Dr. Liza Zahiva from Psyche Electro Acoustic Opera Company, and I'm going to show you guys how to set up text overlays, image overlays, and video overlays to your OBS live stream. If you're new to OBS Studios, you can download it for free at obsproject.com forward slash download. Let's get started. Before you open up OBS, after you've installed it, you have to determine whether you want to use your built-in microphone and webcam or an external microphone and webcam. If you're going to use an external device, you need to set them up before you open up OBS Studios. When you finally open up OBS Studios, your screen will look like this. I'm going to show you how to set up your webcam, but before we do that, we got to make sure that you're capturing audio in OBS. Navigate to the mixer area in OBS and make sure that you're getting signal in your mic aux peaking meter. If you're not, navigate to the gear, click on it, select properties, and select the device you want to use from your pull down menu. Okay, to set up your webcam, navigate to the sources menu, click on the add button, and click on video capture device you're going to create a new device. I already have a device set up with OBS, so I'm going to use an existing device. Your webcam feed should fill the screen like this. I've reduced my screen and placed it, uh, placed it as an overlay above the OBS interface so that you can see what I'm doing. If your camera does not appear in full screen, then you need to change your aspect ratio and resolution. The way you do that is you right click your video capture device in sources, select properties, and navigate to resolution and click custom in the pull down menu. And then navigate to resolution and select the resolution and aspect ratio you want to use. I'm using 1920 by 1080. Now we're going to add a still overlay to our live stream. My overlay was designed in a photo editor and was exported as a PNG. We're going to navigate to the sources area of our interface and click on the add button again. Now we're going to select images from the menu and click on create new. I'm going to label this image still overlay and click on OK. Now I can select my still overlay file from my hard drive by clicking on this browse button. And there's my still overlay. Now I can resize it to taste. This is what it would look like in my live stream. Now I'm going to add a still text overlay in OBS. Now I could have done that when I designed my PNG, but if your text overlay is going to change every time you live stream, it's best to do it in OBS Studios. All right, so I'm going to navigate to my sources menu, click on add, click on text. We're going to create new and I'm going to label this psycheopera.com, my company's website. Click OK. Now, before I type in text into this text box, I'm going to click on this default button, which will allow me to customize my text. First thing I'm going to do is change my font to Arial Narrow. That looks good. I'm going to type in my text. And I'm going to give it a nice pink background. I'm going to navigate to background color, select color, select pink. OK. And now I'm going to enter 50 for 50% opacity. Click. And there is my still text overlay and I can place it wherever I want. And so this is what it's going to look like in your live stream. So now I'm going to use OBS Studio to create scrolling text. You can do this when you create your video overlay, but if you need your scrolling text to change every time you live stream, then you'll want to use OBS's scrolling text feature for that. So here we go. Let's go to our sources menu again click on the add button, click on the text option. We're going to create new text and I'm going to label it scroll or I'm going to label it scrolling text. Click OK. We're going to open up our defaults again to get all of our text formatting features. I'm going to select my font Arial Narrow click OK and type in the text you want scrolling on your screen. A 
a subtle hint there. Let's press OK. All right. And so I'm going to place, oops, 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 oops. I'm going to place my text where I want it to scroll. So after you have your text in place, go back to your sources menu, right click on your scrolling text and click on the option filters. Once you see the screen, click on the add button on the bottom left and select scroll. Press OK. And now you can decide whether you want horizontal scrolling text or vertical scrolling text. I'm going to choose vertical because I think in my case, my text will be easier to read. So we're adding a little interest to this text whilst making sure that it's easy to read. Let's make it a little bit slower so it's not distracting. All right. Awesome. Okay, let's see this full screen. And that's what it looks like in full screen. Next, we're gonna add a video overlay to our live stream. Okay, let's navigate down to our sources menu again. Click on the add button. This time we're going to select media source. All right, under new media source, label your overlay. I'm gonna call this video overlay. Click OK. And so I'm going to select my video overlay for my hard drive by clicking on this Browse button. Locate the file on your hard drive. Now, I want my overlay to play in a loop so it doesn't stop moving in the middle of my stream. So I'm going to check off loop in this menu. Press OK. And there's my video overlay. Now, place it where you want it. Okay, so this is what it looks like in full screen. You're ready to live stream. Next, you have to connect OBS Studio to your favorite streaming platform. For instructions on how to do that, I recommend that you visit techadvisor.co.uk. If you're interested in finding out how I created this video overlay in Adobe Premiere Pro, keep watching. Hello, welcome back everyone. And so now I'm gonna show you how to create a video overlay completely from scratch in Adobe Premiere Pro. Down here in the media browser section, you want to make sure that all of your icons are visible. Here in the bottom of your media browser window, you can stretch open the window if you can't see all of your icons. Next, click on the new item icon. Select color mat. Make sure that the dimensions of your color mat match that of your project. My live stream on OBS was happening at 1920 by 1080, so that has to match here. All right, now I'm gonna click OK, and I'm going to create a white color mat. And now you should see color mat in your media browser. Click on your color mat icon and drag it into your timeline. I wanna create a video overlay that loops every 10 seconds. So I'm going to stretch my color mat out to be 10 seconds long. Okay, next I'm going to go up to my tool palette here and I'm going to select my pen tool. Hold your mouse down on the triangle next to the icon and select rectangle. And I'm going to draw a rectangle at the bottom of my canvas here. So I'm going to play around with my rectangle settings here in Essential Graphics. And what I want to do is reduce the opacity of this pink rectangle. Okay, I think 87% is good enough. Very nice. All right, I'm going to now stretch my graphic to the same length as my color mat. Good. Next, I'm going to bring in my animated logo. I'm going to import Psyche Opera's GIF and drag it into my timeline. And there it is. Now, this logo is a GIF, so I can't stretch it to the 10 seconds that I need. If you press, if you click on the clip itself and press Alt on your keyboard, you can make copies of the clip without much effort here. Okay, this last clip is a little longer than I need it to be, so I can just trim it like 
so all right let's make sure there are no gaps in between oops i found a gap now zoom in on your timeline to fix any gap issues All right, let's make sure it plays smooth. Okay, so now what I want to do is process all of these small clips together. The easiest way to do that is by highlighting all of the clips, go up to the clip menu and select nest. Press okay. And now this is all one clip that you can process. Okay, I'm going to crop my logo. I went to the effects menu, I typed in crop in the search area, and here's the crop effect. Drag the crop effect into your nested sequence, and then look for your crop controls in your effects controls. Make it as symmetrical as possible. Now I'm gonna go up to my motion effects and I'm gonna open up my scale tab and shrink my logo just a bit. And I'm going to use the position to controls to put it down, to move it down to the corner here. One, two. Now I think I wanna place a shape behind my logo. So I'm gonna go back to my tools menu, click on the triangle next to my rectangle tool here and choose ellipse, why not? I can change the color later, no worries. I'm gonna place the ellipse using my position control while it's highlighted. And I'm going to change the order here so that my logo appears over my ellipse. Let me centralize my logo in a nicer looking spot now. All right. Okay, so what I've decided is to not mess with the blend mode for my logo to leave its original colors intact and to make to, and to change the color of the ellipse to black so that it blends with the original background of the logo. And what we have is this. And so now what I have is a transparent bar down here and overlaid over that is an ellipse and overlaid over that is my logo. So now I have an area for scrolling text and now what I'd like to do is have a permanent area for psycheopera.com, my website. So let's go to, let's go to graphics and we're going to browse. And let's see what would be a nice looking permanent text for psycheopera.com. Okay, that modern live overlay would look cool. So I'm going to place that into my timeline and this is what it'll look like. I'm going to stretch it to the length of my color mat. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to type in psycheopera.com. Let's capitalize on it. All right, and here in the essential graphics area, you can change the parameters of your text. much graphics on this side. Let's move our psycheopera.com to the other side. I'm using the position controls to do that. I think that looks better. Let's see what this looks like. And you know what? Uh, let's, let's decrease the opacity of the background of psycheopera.com just a little. Now I want to animate this translucent pink rectangle down here a little bit. I'm going to click on my effects menu and I'm going to 
I'm going to type in the word turbulence and I'm going to click on my turbulence displays plugin and drag it into my rectangle clip. That's cool. That's really cool. Let's see what this looks like. Now, right now, my warped rectangle isn't moving. I can make it move by going to my effects controls. I'm going to scrub all the way to the beginning. I'm going to scrub down to the turbulence displace in my effects controls. I'm going to change the amounts over time through keyframes. So at the beginning of the clip, and I'm going to click on this little toggle next to the word amount. All right, I've entered my first keyframe. And now I'm going to move my cursor through my timeline just a little and make a change. And then move my cursor again, make another change. Move my cursor again and I'll make another change. All right, let's see what this looks like. All right. All right, I think this is a really cool overlay and I think it's much better than the one I made for the earlier part of the tutorial. I'm gonna save this. Now we need to export this the right way so that it does behave like an overlay when we bring it into OBS Studio. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is delete the color map. That's it, now we're ready to export the file. I'm going to go up to my file menu and navigate down to export and I'm gonna go to media. I'm going to go to my source range and click on entire sequence, okay? Now, I'm going to go up to my format pull down menu and select QuickTime. I'm going to deselect export audio. This video has no audio, so I'm going to uncheck that. Now, after that happened, you see this preset change to custom. That's good. We want to leave that alone. Now, what we want to do is navigate down to video codec and in the video codec pull down menu, select animation. Now we want to scrub down to our uh, bit depth, but we want to select 8-bit plus alpha. Check off use maximum render quality. Go up to your output name and name your file. Save. Now click export. All right, cool. Let's see what this looks like in OBS Studios. All right, so here's what it looks like in OBS Studios. Looks pretty cool, huh? Well, if you found this video to be useful, please like, share, and subscribe, or uh, navigate to my video description box and tip me on subscribe star, or if you're on minds.com, please hit that tip button on the bottom. A tip will be very much appreciated. Thank you all, and I hope you enjoy your upcoming live streams.